Hello and welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. It's a special one today. It's an Olympian version. And even though we are a few months out from what will be Tokyo 2020 in 2021, today marks the launch of the second phase of the Dare to Believe program, which brings Olympians out into the classrooms to inspire the next generation of Olympians. I'm delighted to be joined today by Anna O'Flanagan, who will become an Olympian, please God, in, uh, in next summer as part of Ireland's women's hockey team. Uh, we all remember a little over a year ago now the qualification for that. And by Ollie Dingley. And uh, my memories of you, Ollie, are competing in the final back in Rio into the green water that, uh, that did come to pass on that goal. But we'll come to both of you in a moment. I just want to go first, though, to Heather Boyle. Heather works with the Olympic Federation of Ireland. And I'd like, to, if you could, Heather, just to explain the outline of what the Dare to Believe program was intended to do and how it succeeded in its first year last year. Yeah, thanks, Rob, and thanks for having uh, us on here today. Um, Dare to Believe is actually the brainchild of uh, Roshan McGettigan, a 2008 uh, Olympian in the steeplechase. Basically, she, when she, her, from her own experience, she came back from the Games and she was buzzing with all this energy about what the Olympics were to her. And she was asked by a lot of schools to go in and, and speak to them about um, her Olympic experience and all the things she learned and her story along the way. And uh, she was very excited to do so until she opened the door and went into the school and just realized that everything she wanted to say couldn't come out like she wanted to. And she felt she couldn't convey the messages that she wanted to do properly. But at the same time, she was looking at, you know, all the learnings that she had, her journey in sport and everything that that could bring. And I suppose she went away from it uh, rather than being, I suppose, disheartened with it, a little bit motivated to say, do you know what? I think there's a gap in the market. There's a gap somewhere for people like me, for people like other athletes to actually learn how to tell their, their story, but to, to actually effectively use that to inspire um, children. Because um, it's not even just about like, you know, we want to get the next Olympians. It's, it's not necessarily that. It's, it's allowing children in their own environments to actually be able to set goals and targets and achieve them. So, um, so she approached us, um, she approached us in, in 2018 with this plan. And I think she may have been talking to a few people before that, but I started in 2018. So my, my memory <laughs> starts there, but she, uh, she approached us with this, with this plan. And from the athletes commission side, the athletes commission were really supportive and, and really, um, help would come about because, you know, the, the, one of their strategic pillars is about athlete welfare and it is about developing those kind of presentation skills. And then with Peter Sherrard on board as CEO um, and Sarah Keane supporting and president, we were able to kind of actually properly develop it and initially um, develop it using Olympic solidarity uh, funds through the IOC. And, uh, and then, of course, this week for phase two, we're delighted to have sponsorship of, of FPD to be able to actually enhance and grow it so basically what it is what it starts off is is a program that is five rings so the five rings obviously coming from our olympic uh, background and uh, the the it's developed using like actual curriculum 40 40 strands of educational curriculum so that when a teacher gets this resource they can actually adapt it to learning in the in the classroom so before the athletes ever go into the classroom the uh, teacher brings um, brings the school through um, through um, different subjects like uh, respect, equality, friendship, the joy of effort, setting goals, all of these kind of uh, items with uh, you know tangible um, games that are appropriate for for the primary school age. So so far it's been for kind of age nine to eleven, and uh, you know people will, the kids will be. Um, drawing, designing posters, designing stadiums, they will be writing letters, writing songs, and all of these we've been seeing in the last year, and it's just absolutely amazing. But the final ring is striving for excellence, and that's when, that's where Ollie and Anna and all our other uh, 25 ambassadors come into it, and they come into the classroom, they answer any questions that the, ki the kids have, and it, like they're really out of the box kind of questions sometimes, but they're really, um, they answer all the questions while telling them how they achieved what they did. And we always bring in an element of resilience, you know, like everybody has gone through their journey. They've gone through their own challenges and we talk, we let them talk about through how they overcame challenges to get where they are. So it's a really, it's a, it's an, it's a brilliant program. In that first year, we targeted 4,000 kids 
and we actually hit 5,000 kids and there are more and more um, looking for this. So we, we are, this is why we're expanding to 25 athletes. And then with the, uh, with the um, support of FPT, we're really able to grow it and, uh, and we will be growing it beyond this and bringing it into secondary schools and the like. Oh, that's great. Everybody tunes in when the Olympic Games comes onto the televisions and onto the radio bulletins, but this will give a whole new generation of kids an extra impetus to actually take real active part in what's actually going on around them. Can I come to you, Anna? Obviously, standing up in front of a classroom of kids is not something that is perhaps as daunting as standing there waiting for the, to, the ball to be thrown in for the, you know, for the start of a match. But at the same time, it's something that if you don't prepare for, you're probably going to end up falling flat on your face with the laughter of the children ringing in your ears. How have you begun to prepare for doing that? Some might say it's more daunting, I think, getting in front of a group of kids <laughs> than doing what I'm, what I'm comfortable doing. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I'm obviously really excited to go in and, and, and chat to, to as many kids as possible. But I think the preparation has been great. We've had a training day, obviously all online, but we've had a training day already and we've started to, to piece together our presentation and our story as to what we would say to, to the children. So yeah, I'm really grateful obviously to be part of the program. And, and I just, you know, thinking back to my own school days, I, I just, it would have made my year for someone to come in and, and chat to me and tell me about their sporting life and how they were going to the Olympics or had been to the Olympics and, and how they achieved that. And, and yeah, I'm just really excited to get in there and, and hopefully our, pre, our, our prep will, uh, you know, pay off. I won't fall flat on my face in front of the kids, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And is it very much a, a, a personal way of, of addressing it or do you, do you get guidance and coaching in terms of how to actually define your story? because presentation is something which when you can do it it's relatively straightforward but looking at it from a point of view of not having done much of it beforehand that can be very daunting yeah absolutely and I've definitely had some presentation skills along the way in, in presenting to adults or presenting to companies or things but it's so different when you're speaking to children and I think what's great about Dare to Believe is that they give you just a platform to tell your story and each athlete has their own story and their own, you know, what they've overcome to get there or the things, you know, different things that have happened along the way for them. So I think with Dare to Believe, you're, you're given a, a kind of a guideline and a platform and the people are there to help you refine that. But it's about you just going in, you telling your story and you really, you know, engaging with the kids themselves. And I think what helps me is just, remembering back to what I would have you know thought of when I was sitting there and what I would have wanted to hear and and then really bringing it down to that level um so yeah it's I yeah it's a great program and, and I'm really looking forward to it and and hopefully yeah I can tell my story and inspire a few people along the way great Ollie you will be familiar to some of the kids maybe their brothers and sisters certainly their mums and dads from appearing in Rio how have the last four years been for you and how much of your story does the post-Olympic uh, side of things actually form when you're going to be standing up and talking to your kids? Yeah, the four, well, the three, yeah, four years have actually been uh, extremely busy and I've had huge changes in my life as well. Uh, for starters, I've gone back to my education. Now, I hated school. Uh, I couldn't wait to leave school. I was the last at everything. I struggled with everything. And at five o'clock each day, but well, I came across diving. And at five o'clock each day, I'd go into this bubble and it would be a bit of a safe haven. And it was just somewhere that I would excel. And, and it taught me lessons. It, I, it helped me make friends. It helped me with my confidence. And so I've, I felt like something was missing in 2017. And, uh, and it turned out it was education. So I actually started filming broadcasting at TU Dublin. Now, the first thing was great because I had a social life. It's great to meet people outside of sport uh, and also share some interests that I had that, that were different to, to sporting interests. And that's really helped me have a good balance in my, in my life between diving, uh, which is my full-time occupation, and college, which is also a full-time course as well. But I've been able to have a real healthy balance, and my diving's really benefited because of that. So I've, I've learned a lot of story, uh, yeah, a lot of learning lessons throughout the last four years, 
uh, especially more than any point in my career, which, which I'm looking forward to sharing as well. I think that will certainly resonate with a number of them, the fact that you really didn't like school. So you're going to be off to a winner from the, uh, from the get-go anyway. Um, in terms of getting into classrooms now, do you know yet, is it going to be done in person or will a lot of it be like this on Zoom calls and, and being broadcast in? Obviously, things will hopefully improve over the course of the months, but between now and Tokyo, it's unlikely that there will be much real-world stuff, I would imagine. Yeah, it looks like it will be over Zoom for the foreseeable. But having said that, first of all, it's just going to be great to see people, even if it's over a computer screen. It's been a very strange period for, for everybody, uh, adapting to different life scenarios. So in order just to, just to see people over a computer screen is one step in the right direction. And I'm personally really, really looking forward to that and I'm meeting new people and sharing my story. And the dream is hopefully we will be in a classroom sooner rather than later. But, but at the moment, it's one step at a time. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting involved with the Dare to Believe. I'm one of 25 athletes. I've been listening to the other athlete stories as well. And everybody has their own unique individual story and i believe everyone in life has their own individual story whether it's in sport or something else uh, and and i'm really looking forward to sharing mine and listening to others as well i think it'll be great and one of the great things about sporting achievement is the ability to go back to your own school and inspire those from your school but of course that's only a tiny fraction of the schools that can actually have somebody that reaches those high levels whereas now you'll be able to go back into the school that you spoke to and uh, hopefully be able to recount uh, great tales of what has happened in, in Tokyo as well. Before I let you go, I might just ask you, each of you, for your own personal uh, first Olympic memories. Unfortunately, mine was, uh, was of um, the uh, 1976 Olympic in, uh, in Montreal, and uh, it wasn't a great one, all right, with a little bit of uh, supposed alleged cheating in the 100 metres. Um, so maybe that's why I didn't fulfil my Olympic potential. I'm sure yours are more positive and probably more recent as well. Maybe, Anna, if I go to you first. Yeah, I think my first memory is probably the, the 2000 Olympics and Sonia Sullivan. I think she was always a great female uh, role model for every athlete in Ireland growing up. And, and I, I definitely remember sitting there watching her race at, at that Olympics and, and thinking how amazing and how cool it was. But, you know, I think one of my motivations for Dare to Believe is that there's there's more people like Sonia Sullivan out there and and maybe as a young girl growing up playing sport, she was maybe the only female person in Ireland that I could name, that I could, you know, aspire to be like. And she didn't play a team sport. She was just an individual athlete. So I think for me, it's so important that every girl sitting in a classroom today is able to see lots of different female role models and know that they can achieve whatever they want, whether it's in sport or in another way of life, that's fine. But, you know, that they have so many different female role models and, and even for the boys as well to see that there are lots of different female athletes out there in team sport and in individual sports. And yeah, that's something I really am looking forward to. The Olympics is great for that because it is, it's men and women wearing the same kit, appearing in the same stadium on the same evening. Um, it, it definitely is. It's, it's long been a role model. How about you, Ollie? What was the first memory? Yeah, no, I, my first memory was actually kind of a, a bit fleeting. I remember sitting down and watching fireworks on the Sydney Harbour Bridge and uh, on TV uh, and just remembering the sheer magnitude of this event. And it really got me into sport. And now it wasn't, it was also the Olympics, but there was one major event in my life growing up that really got me, which was the 2002 World Cup. Because a guy called Andy O'Brien, who uh, represented Ireland at the World Cup. Uh, now he's actually from Harrogate, my own town. Both me and him are lucky enough to represent Ireland, but we weren't actually born in Ireland. And he actually went to the same secondary school as me as well in the end uh, and I remember meeting him he was uh, handing out participation medals and I was in the long line of kids who who was lucky enough to get a medal from him and I just remember just seeing this kind of this mystical man who just was amazing at this sportsman and and it was someone who I always really admired and then there's 
since then there's been so many different sporting stories I've admired and and learned from and a lot of those have come from Olympic stories it's such a, a huge event which is such a well-rounded event that has people from all different walks of life different events all merging into one spot and so yeah probably 2004 uh, would be the, the Olympics that I really remember and just watching all those athletes and yeah, from just a different mixture of life, uh, the sheer magnitude of it, I just found overwhelming. And I was lucky enough to experience that myself walking into the American R at an Olympic opening ceremony. And, uh, you know, it's what stuff is what dreams are made of getting to watch stuff like that and then finding yourself in that position. Uh, I never knew if I was going to be an Olympian, but those sporting memories certainly spurred me on to wanting to achieve that. It's probably the intensity of competition and the fact that you realize that the whole world is tuned into that one particular city, that one particular stadium. Uh, in your case, that one particular high diving board. Um, Heather, how about you? Yeah, well, I suppose one of my earliest, earliest ones that I'm, I'm reminded of is when I was in, um, I, I don't really have it as a memory except it's, it's, it's a photo uh, of me sitting in my junior infants class getting the school photo. And right behind me was a book uh, that said the Olympics or history of the Olympics or something like that. And it's funny, like that photo has been kind of sitting, sitting in my house since I was a kid. And it was just always something that I looked at and kind of was like, on, this, is, this is what I meant to do. Now, it never worked out for me as an athlete, but that's a whole other story. But, um, but there is, beyond that, like it was kind of the later ones, like say Soul or that, where... You know, I'd go over to a friend's house uh, in the morning and, you know, I remember her mother was up all night watching the Olympics. And I was like, what is this thing that keeps, you know, like that, that keeps that um, kind of attract attraction or draws people to it. And uh, and I just think that there is just something I, I think like was it, uh, Ollie was saying, like there's something magical about it, that it's 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 one in four years. Very few people make it and it doesn't come around that often. And it's just that that magic piece about it that it just it just always gets you you know so. so I guess the moral of the story is never ever give up on your dreams even if you don't realize that they are going to be dreams from a junior infant's background photograph to uh, to Olympic Games in, in Sydney and Athens and everything else um, the the task now is to inspire that next generation dare to believe is the program that you're going to be going out there and doing the very best of luck with that and for the moment, anyway, uh, my sincere thanks for joining us to Heather Boyle from the Olympic Federation, to Ollie Dingley, and to Anna O'Flanagan. Uh, you're very kind to take the time to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.